Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearance video. I thought I would mix one of these in while I'm wrapping up the Cryptids and Monsters one, only because yesterday's um, on this day topic brought up this particular disappearance and when I was looking at the information I realized this is too good like this is something that I should make a separate video for rather than let's say the on um, this day podcast itself and it has to do with a uh, with something that occurred a couple of decades back that got a moniker uh, in this case it was called the missingest man in New York because of all the hoopla associated with this guy's disappearance to this very Every day, people still don't know what happened to him, what occurred, where his body is. It's almost as if he disappeared from the face of the earth. So let's go ahead and let's share this information that has to do with this. It's the disappearance of a man named Joseph Force Carter. So here's all the information associated with this this legendary uh, disappearance there in New York. So who was Joseph Force Carter? Well, he was someone that grew up there in uh, Pennsylvania as a young man and then eventually in life he ended up getting a law degree from Columbia University. He was born in 1889 got the degree in 1916 and then he had like a meteoric rise almost like he started off as a lowly clerk at some location and then moved on to become a lawyer and then through those uh, steps little by little he eventually had these political connections throughout New York City specifically to start elevating his career further and further by the way um, some of the stuff related to his appearance may have to do with the fact that people think he had some shady stuff happening in his life for example that meteoric rise eventually culminated with him becoming a justice of the New York Supreme Court there in New York County at the young age Age, relatively young age of 41 years old because normally you would think somebody if they were on the Supreme Court that they would have a uh, older age like let's say decades more of experience but no in this case he had that title right there as a justice by the age of 41 but mysteriously enough just a couple months before he took that position in his bank account he withdrew at that time $20,000 now no known record shows like where that $20,000 went but that's a lot of money using the inflation calculator it shows that in today's dollars 20,000 would be about two hundred and ninety three thousand dollars so people were thinking to themselves this guy must have actually paid off somebody within what was called there the Tammany Hall political area in order to receive this uh, New York Supreme Court appointment that's just some of the shady stuff that people associate with him it, they, they, they don't think that he uh, just had this meteoric rise just by pure luck. Also, another thing that he uh, had that was more on the seedier side happened to be with showgirls. He was a big fan of showgirls. Like, he would actively dine out with showgirls. He had several mistresses, in fact. More on that a little bit later because that ties into his disappearance. All of this while he was married to his wife, too. So, it, either he was flaunting this openly or she kind of knew it but then just kept quiet. Either way, like, when he was in one part of town, he had had his mistresses and then when he was back at home in this case I believe it was in Maine then he was with his wife so it just goes to show the duplicitous nature of this guy this Joseph Force uh, cr crater but yes, it cut to a couple of years later, and then fi I'm sorry, a little bit later, and then finally on August 1930, that's when things turned up with his disappearance. So the way the story goes, he was returning from a trip to from Maine to New York, and apparently, like he got a phone call, a mysterious phone call, within uh, his home there in Maine, and there he didn't tell his wife what the phone call was about, like in terms of details. Instead, just told her that he had to go back to. New New York City to quote unquote straighten these fellas out and so he went back there uh, made a trip a uh, side trip to Atlantic City apparently also stayed with his mistress there was a showgirl another one that he stayed with by the name of Sally Lou Ritzy and then he returned back to Maine did another trip back to New York and that was to be his final final trip like essentially the final time that people would see him he did promise though his wife before he 
made that final trip to New York, that he would absolutely return by her birthday, which was just a couple of days later, August 9th. So his trip to New York was on August 3rd. His expectation was that he would be back in Maine by August 9th, and then that was the end of it. And then the way the story goes, uh, sometime around... Um, August 6th, he was there in his courthouse chambers. Some of his uh, people that worked there, including a law clerk by the name of Joseph Mayer, saw him mysteriously destroy several documents that were within his chambers. And he had two checks cashed that amounted to about $5,000 back then. And uh, now doing another uh, calculation from the inflation calculator, that comes to a little under $75,000. So imagine. Imagine that your 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 boss has given you two checks to cash out of the blue that total seventy five thousand dollars for some transaction or for some activity that remained mysterious. So lots of bad things or lots of things that didn't quite add up that were happening on that day. And then he and the clerk they went uh, with two briefcases that had unknown materials to the clerk. They would just simply lock briefcases. They went back to his apartment and then he told the clerk to take the rest of the day off. And then later on this judge, this Joseph Crater went to a ticket, like went to a Broadway show called Dancing Partner. He had one last dinner with a friend of his, a lawyer friend of his, and then also his mistress, the lady that was called Sally Lou Ritzy. And then that was it. That was the end of anybody ever seeing him again. The way that they stated it, they kind of contradicted each other at first. His last known sighting was they saw him get into a taxi cab outside of the restaurant sometime about 9.30 p.m. And then the taxi cab drove off into the street but then they later on stated a different version of it instead they took the taxi cab and then they saw him walk down the street just by himself and then that was it no one else saw him ever again uh, anywhere so that was his first known disappearance like his, what, what, what started it all now interestingly enough Nobody reported anything for the next 10 days. Not his friends, not his wife, nobody. I guess his wife, again, was expecting him to be back around the 9th or so. But even then, like this was something that was stretching beyond it. She, in turn, started to make phone calls to people in New York to try to find out, hey, have you seen my husband? Do you know where Joseph Crater is? Nothing along those lines. It was only until August 25th, a couple of weeks later, when he was supposed to have been at work there at the at the uh, Justice Hall, that the, that the other justices became alarmed because they noticed that he wasn't there. Like, clearly, nobody knew where he was. He should have been there, but he wasn't. And so they were finally, the police were finally notified on September 3rd and then that's when everything just blew up like there was a huge search for this judge because even uh, uh, being, being there just at a young age he was still apparently very much beloved so even despite his seedier side um, in terms of potentially paying off people to get his appointment ship in terms of all the of all the mysterious activity that he did he still made a lot of friends a lot of political connections a lot of people knew him I guess they went to him for counsel whatever is the case and it became front page news like everybody was talking about this so much so in fact that there was even a term that grew from his disappearance. Um, I think it was called pulling a carter. It was the idea that um, at that time, everybody was so into trying to find him, the phrase pulling a carter became synonymous with the phrase AWOL. And even uh, so comedians at that time were using this in their stand-up routines to try to, I guess, keep with the times. You know how sometimes comedians, they'll always incorporate current subjects or current topics within their acts such was the case here with this with this missing judge but nobody was able to find them uh, the police immediately began suspecting some people in this case some of his mistresses remember I was mentioning this earlier the lady that he had that that final dinner with uh, Sally Lou Ritzy she stated that she suddenly uh, went back home the, the police found that a little bit mysterious how on that very same time period period like she suddenly left New York she went back home to Youngstown Ohio with her parents the reason she told the police was because her father was ill and so that that's pretty much where things went there uh, but that nobody I guess could tie anything to her there was another mistress another showgirl that also had a relationship with this guy Crater she was somewhat suspected only because 
there was something in terms of let's say uh, um, a, a boyfriend or somebody that she had an acquaintance with that was part of a seedier side they believed that they were trying to blackmail the crater and that's why he was withdrawing all that money beforehand like maybe they were trying to entice him and say you know we'll, we'll tell everybody the media anybody that, that that'll listen that you're having a relationship with this this other person and try to essentially create a scandal out of it and then things went too far and then that's when he was either murdered disappeared that's one angle that people went with but there again there was never any proof and then that showgirl ended up eventually being in a mental hospital there was yet another person in this case of a, a prostitute more along the lines of a high-end escort that he was also familiar with because um, she was someone that I guess was with him for a couple of evenings and whatever was the case um, there was a jacket of his that was found in one of her apartments she also had an affiliation with a gangster by the name of jack legs diamond and they were also somewhat involved or police suspected in his disappearance but again they couldn't do anything uh, in terms of a direct tie there was even the notion that he as part of his seedier activities was was creating like situations where he would benefit some of his quote-unquote partners some of the people on the uh darker side of things and then he just got too involved like for example there was one case where as a judge he sold a property for much less a uh, property that was bankrupt he sold it for much much less to an unknown party that bought it at like dirt cheap prices and then resold it to the city of New York for a huge profit like three million dollars something profit something along those lines huge money especially back then and that apparently he got a cut of it and then his partners the ones that he associated with got a cut of it too and then things spilled out like um, people were thinking that 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 eventually you know there is no honor among thieves and then they had him killed that's yet another angle in terms of what happened to him but yes I mean this stuff just stretched out almost like like a spider web it just went out his disappearance launched a whole bunch of things eventually the corruption or the scandal within the appointment of politicians was impacting other areas that was removed and then this even this like it led to the resignation of the mayor at the time a guy by the name of Jimmy Walker but still to the very end nobody was able to find out where he was there was the assumption that maybe he ran off with one of his mistresses elsewhere but people quickly uh, denounced that because the idea was he was so well known and his face was so much everywhere in terms of trying to find him that he would not have any chance of disappearing without somebody recognizing him so that was kind of thrown out then there was the idea that maybe he was just uh, just just outright killed but nobody was coming forward with regards to anything like nobody that was confessing nobody that was being coerced to it nothing like that not even his wife um, who who tried every which way to find out what happened to him also because she was apparently left broke by his disappearance uh, she was living on something like the equivalent of $200 a month. And so she was trying to have him either found or, or in this case, declared legally dead. So that way she could collect on his insurance to help her out. Eventually, the judge agreed there was another court. And it was decided that cut to nine years later, 1939, he was declared legally dead because nobody ever found him he didn't turn up anywhere no body was ever found nothing and so that was the official date of him being declared dead and to this day nobody knows where he's at the closest that there was in terms of any resolution and I use that in quotations is the fact that there was in 2005 someone that died a woman that was by the name of Stella Ferrucci Good they found notes in her area like wherever she lived maybe it was a deathbed note something along those lines she claimed in those notes that her husband a guy by the name of Robert Good he was someone that was in the NYPD specifically as a detective was told that the story involving the disappearance of Judge Joseph Force uh, Crater happened to be a murder and it was somebody by the name of a officer another NYPD officer Charles Burns he murdered uh, in this case Judge Joseph Force Crater 
and that's uh, that the body was buried somewhere in Coney Island, specifically, I guess, where the boardwalk tends to be. And that the idea is that somewhere along those lines, when the New York Aquarium was later built afterward, that whatever skeletal remains were there, in this case of this judge, must have been exhumed beforehand by whoever killed them and placed them there, and then got rid of it elsewhere. That's the closest there has been to any kind of known affiliation of of where his body is at one point it could have been buried there in the in the boardwalk area of Coney Island but then it would have been removed long before the New York Aquarium would have that the construction of New York Aquarium would have had people discover the body and then that's it like it was removed elsewhere and no one knows where it's at at this point so in other words the judge uh, this Joseph Force Crater he's just simply gone uh, disappeared against from the face of the earth and that's why for the longest time he held the moniker of being the most missingest man in New York but that's it. That's pretty much all the information tied to this fascinating case. Um, who knows, maybe one day there will be something in terms of an actual clue that will lead to either a final resolution of what happened to him or maybe even then where his body is. But otherwise, that's all the information. So, All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.